All right. You can hear yourself? Yeah. All right, bet. Yeah, real clear. All right, man. What's up, y'all? This is Johnny G. I'm the host of the conference. I got a special guest here today. Everyone give a round of applause for my man, Cameron Johnson. <laughs> hey, man, I just want to... First off, bro, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming. Not it about. means a lot to me, man. So thank yeah, you very man. much. I appreciate you having me, man. The the setup's dope, man. The Marvel. No, I feel like you you plan on me coming. You know, I, was, I knew I was a Marvel fan and whatnot, but yeah, bro. Nah, this is dope. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, man, no problem, dude. Yeah. Honestly, uh, man, when my cousin was telling me, Ren was telling me about you. Like a couple of years ago, right? Oh, it's funny. It's like actually it's been a minute, man. Yeah, it's been a minute, bro. Damn, I feel right. like this this link. I feel like should have happened a long time ago. Yeah, personally. yeah, definitely. It's been a uh, long overdue, right? But um, man, one of the first things he ever actually told me was uh, I don't know how you gonna feel about this, but he showed me a video of him beating you on a route. Oh my uh, god. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Man. he was like, bro, this guy played in the NFL at one point. And I just started <laughs> laughing. I was like, dog, there's no way. <laughs> so yeah, he was pretty hype about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not he, bro. He he uses that to this day, man. It's. Uh, <laughs> I feel like as an as a former like, <laughs> athlete, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like maybe when you're playing with your friends or something, and they get like an edge on you a little Bruh, bit. Bro, it's it's like one play. Yeah. Like I, you know, I'm not even gonna talk, man. I I let him have his his moment <laughs> and whatnot, bro. But you know, it was we was messing around, fooling around, got the football out. Yeah. You know, we was doing what we did. But he's like, hey, do that for sixty minutes, bro. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, nah. I, he knows, man. I don't. I don't gotta get into detail, but yeah, man. He knows what's up. I was watching some of your, uh, some of your clips, bro, right. and I was like, one one thing I noticed uh, was <clears throat> you're not afraid to tackle. Oh no! Like has yeah. has it has, has it always been that way? <laughs> oh, since I was little, man. My dad uh, literally had a, had me uh, when I was younger. He. Uh, I mean, he had his helmet from his collegiate days, and oh, okay. I put on his helmet. What did he play? He played. Uh, he played at Tuskegee, so it was like an HBCU. Okay, but um, he was really good though. He's in the Hall of Fame at that school. That is dope. Yeah, as hell, yeah. Bro. Damn, but um, that, that ass. yeah, it's crazy. But uh, yeah, bro, he had me um from like a a little kid. Like uh, as soon as he signed me up for football, he he put me in a helmet, and he just said, "Hey, like uh, I need you to like." Run into basically run into me full speed and and like I'm it, like he was testing my like uh, my aggressiveness basically yeah. like is this kid scared to scared of contact yeah so he'd have me run into him like straight elbow and he's a brawling dude yeah. six four like oh, two yeah. big dude yeah and he would just boom head would fly back and but I was go I kept like he just said, do it again like do it again like. <laughs> It was like, I'm thinking like, bro, is this like CPS going to get called on me or something? But, <laughs> right? uh, yeah, bro, he had me uh, he had me doing the contact thing for a little bit. And um, ever since that day, man, I knew, you know, I wasn't afraid of contact. Um, I, I did not want to play football when I was younger. Okay. Um, I cried. I remember the day my mom, uh, my dad walked into my room and said, hey, like, you're going to football practice. And it was a little league um, out in, like, the south side of Houston. Oh, shit, okay. And I was, I was like, bro, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to play that. Like, I, that's, I, that's not my sport. Like, I wanted to play basketball. I was okay. like, I don't want to do that. Blah blah. I get out there first day and I'm tackling, popping, doing some stuff that I didn't even know I was, you know, capable. Of yeah, doing. yeah, yeah. I didn't know, you know, it just came natural. So damn. Um, um, yeah. So I guess what made you a. Uh so man, so you say you didn't even like really want to play football, but how far you've been able to take that? <clears throat> right. Like, I guess where did that? Because you were telling me before we started recording that you mm -hmm. never like you never had a true passion for football. Was that what you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just more like a like a hobby that you were really good at. It was uh um, so my my family they they raised my brother and I uh both to, in a way where like um. Like in everything you do, you should try to be the best. Like strive mm. to be the best. It doesn't matter what it is. If you if you're doing it and you've committed to it and you know you've committed to it, like do the best you can and be the best you can. Like don't worry about anybody else. Like try to separate yourself. 
So no matter what it is, no bro. matter what it is, like bro. That. Yeah. So um, uh, my my passion um, I, I can't say that uh, football. Like I had the the biggest deepest passion for it. Like I wasn't a kid like dreaming of going to the NFL or uh you know doing all these things and playing at these schools and going d1 my whole thing was like man i want to own a business i want to be like a top tier entrepreneur one day yeah but uh i looked at how much nfl players are making and i said you know what man if this is my outlet like i'm gonna try to do my very best to get as far as i possibly can and if that check comes then that check comes but um uh all that aside, yeah, bro, I think my passion stemmed from just wanting to be better than anybody around me and, and wanting to be the best. Yeah. Uh, and I think my family can attest to that as well. Everybody was kind of very pushy on, like, no matter what it is, like, be the best. Grades, school, your job, whatever the case may be, like, do it to the best of your ability. And I think yeah. that that brought me pretty far along in everything I, I did, pretty much. So, Man, dude, that's... Interesting. Uh, I feel like, man, so I guess going back, going back in a way mm. from what high school did you go to? Yeah. So uh, uh, initially, freshman and sophomore year, I went to a school in League City called Clear Falls High School. Okay. Um, are you familiar with that? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was at Clear Falls. Uh, didn't have the best record there. My dad straight up said, like, nah, bro, <laughs> you finna play football. You finna go to a school to get noticed. Um, and and in my mind, as a kid, I was like, man, I can get noticed from anywhere. Like, I can stay here and just, you know, even though we don't have, like, the the best of, of team or whatever the case may be, like, yeah. I feel like, you know, that, that player will always stand out. But uh, in his mind, I was like, nah, bro, like, it's political like we gotta we gotta get on the move get somewhere where you know s- scouts are you know are it's looking, a highly yeah. recognized like football school yeah whatever the case is so uh that's crazy bro yeah yeah that's yeah. kind of similar to how i feel like when you said that mm. you know jalen hurts yeah 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 okay so jalen hurts uh, played, channel view right yeah, yeah. jalen hurts played for the channel view falcons yeah, and i watched them in high school yeah, yeah. i remember that yeah. we, we played against them uh laporte played against them one day right and uh, i remember seeing them on the field and he was the only guy with the ball in his hands, like, damn near 95% of the mm-hmm. time. You know what I'm saying? He was their best player on the field. Right. And he had already been, like, uh, scouted to go to Alabama yeah, at yeah. that time. So mm-hmm. it was like, <clears throat> like, you just got to be, in a way where I'm getting at with that is, like, you got to be that much different to stand out at a school like that. Because Channel View, I don't yeah. even know if they had, like, the best record at that time. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how do you even find that as a scout? Like right. that kind of talent in that spot? I don't know, man. Uh, I know Jalen Hurts back back in the back in that time. Twitter was big. I don't know if uh, I, I'm not even on Twitter anymore, so I don't know yeah. if it's at, still as popular. But I remember like Twitter was like your scouting like resume like mm. for everything. Yeah, and I just remember being on Twitter and seeing like uh, like. Like some old style clips filmed from like one of them older phones, yeah. uh, film of Jalen Hurts doing something crazy, and everybody was hyping it up on Twitter, and I was like, okay, like you know, he put himself out there, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and um, but to go back, I'm sorry, man, but to go back yeah. to your story about you know your pops wanting to be on the move. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, I transferred to a school in the inner city called Reagan High School. Okay. It used to be called Reagan High School. They changed it to Heights High School now. Okay. But uh, um, it still wasn't as uh, – I can't even say that's like a big football school. But the coach there um, – Was it a better, better program? Man, it was, a, it was a much better program than my initial school. Okay. I can't uh, – now, Clear Falls nowadays, they're, they're handling business. They got every the new coach, new coaching staff, new system – and I'm, I'm pretty sure like they're like a consistent playoff team, but um, over at uh, Heights Reagan, I'll, I'll call it Reagan because that's when I was there. Yeah. But um, over at Reagan, um, our coach was so passionate about like his players getting in the schools, and he he really did a lot. Like he vouched for us more than any other coach I've ever been around. And that's dope. And uh, I think that's what won my dad's like uh approval. approval yeah, yeah, to go to that school. Cause I was looking at schools like Manville, yeah. uh Pearland. North uh, Shore probably. Yeah, yeah. I was I was looking at like the the bigger the football top schools. Texas schools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I did a visit to Lamar High School, and okay. uh, um, you know, Lamar was stacked at the time. They had some solid talent. I think they had uh, Holton Hill at. I, I think when I was about to go there, Holton Hill was about to leave. Um, okay. They call him Hollywood Hill, um, and he I th- he st- he still might be in the league. I haven't really followed after um, what he's doing right now, but um, they were loaded. They had all the talent, especially at my position. So yeah. when uh, you know my you played DB, correct? Defensive back. Yeah, okay. I played cornerback specifically cornerback, in high yeah. school. Yeah. Um, but I remember going to Lamar and the coach was like, uh, you know, he was excited. He was like, yeah, bro, get him over here, blah, blah, blah. But, um, man, I looked, you know, we, we did our homework. They had DBs after DBs after DBs. One sophomore guy that had offers already. And at that time, I had no man. offers as, yeah. a, as a sophomore. I didn't have nothing. Um, junior year is when everything came in. I ended mm. up getting like 15 different schools. Um, Damn, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I got to Reagan. I wouldn't trade it for nothing, bro. My uh, high school coach, you know, Coach Dixon, solid dude, looked after his players, um, real respected guy. So, uh, yeah, I don't regret that decision at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then from that point on, I guess you – you had a scholarship, maybe at North, is it was it North Texas? Yeah, yeah. So initially, I went to UNT, mm-hmm. um, and then uh, I ended up transferring over to UCLA, yeah, finishing out my collegi- collegiate uh, career over there. What so, uh, I guess, like what what were you whenever you transferred a, a sophomore? So, so I grad transferred. Um, so grad transferred to UCLA, um, and over at UCLA, that's when I finished up the rest of my time. Um, ended up getting my master's degree and everything. Oh, so, sure. okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I did see that. That's um, uh, the degree in transformative coaching and leadership. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can yeah. you explain a little bit more of, like, I guess like, what that is? Because I didn't know that right. was something you could even get a degree in. Yeah, bro. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, pretty much it's – um, uh, so uh, it – a lot of people utilize it in like any type of equity and inclusion role. So a lot of jobs nowadays, um, they they're real high on like inclusivity and um, um, having everybody kind of feel like uh, they should be there, regardless of race, sexuality, whatever the case is. Yeah. Um, and then uh, it all it also encompasses like a lot of leadership uh, skills and mindsets and. Mm. Uh, uh, if you want to get into coaching or if you want to get into some type of leadership role, uh, specifically coaching, yeah. um, it kind of, you know, we go over some, uh, a lot of our, our research topics are uh, over like a lot of big time coaches and big time leaders, okay. uh, specifically within the sports world, but also within like the, the job world or uh, just big time people, bro. Big yeah. time leaders, um, corporate people who are like, yeah, not, not so uh, like that. But just probably take care of their employees, right? And their people, right? Exactly. They like, don't treat it like, like, oh, this is my thing. I did this. Right. They're, they're not so like, uh, I don't know what you call it. I guess just controlling. And yeah, everything. yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, you know, it's it's inclusivity. Like everything's inclusive. Yeah. So. Um, there, uh, you know, John Wooden was like a, a really big uh, name that was a, a lot of people used within that. That his name was dropped a lot within that um, class. Oh. Within that, yeah, within yeah. that class. Um, and uh, it, I don't know if you're familiar with John Wooden, but John Wooden was the coach for UCLA for many years, okay. won multiple championships. I think um, mm. he might have he might have the he might have the most winning. Winningest, I'm not sure if that's the, the, if I'm saying the it most right. Winning record, winning, yeah, yeah, record in UCLA history okay. um, as a coach. And um, um, dang, dude, that's, he was that's something. Yeah, he's top tier, solid dude. And that was just like one of the guys that we uh, we studied a lot. And um, yeah, bro, you can use it in, you can kind of utilize it in the business world. Use it, utilize it in the coaching world, or um, it branches out. So it's pretty broad, but um, it's helpful for a lot of. Uh, you know, leadership related activities. Did that have, I guess, like his name being dropped? Oh, wait, well, now I think about it, you were in UCLA whenever you took that class. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so yeah. that makes sense as to mm-hmm. why that name was dropped so much. Was right. there a specific reason? I guess, well, before I ask this question, what was the, 
I guess, was there a specific reason you wanted to go to UCLA? And then what were the differences between the two collegiate programs that you had gone through as far as North Texas and right. UCLA? Right, right, yeah. So uh, my choices, um, my my uh, my school choices were, um, I mean, I had offered some Syracuse, Tennessee, mm-hmm. Mississippi State, UCLA, um, and some more. Damn, um, dude. But uh, my schools. Yeah, yeah. But my, my two top choices were Tennessee and um um the Vols and yeah. UCLA, the Bruins. And uh my my mom is a highly academic uh woman. Like she is uh super professional. She just she's always um really implemented like, hey, like your schooling is the mo- one of the most important things. Got to get good grades. Got to do yeah. well. Got to you know um, set yourself up uh, for success, um, academically speaking. So um, UCLA was uh, is the number one public school in the world. Um, academically speaking, I think it trumps a lot of schools, um, and that alone says that that's a big major reason why i chose that school over yeah. any other school i'm not downing on any other school tennessee mississippi state oh, yeah. those are very you know top tier yeah. collegiate that's just universities yeah yeah but my specifically for me i just felt like ucla was a better fit um you know tennessee that's sec football yeah. stadium full of 103,000. they fill it up yeah. every game uh ucla pac 12 at the time didn't really get the res- pac 12 Typically, doesn't really get the respect they deserve as far as uh, fill it, uh, fans filling up their stadiums and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I didn't mind that. I knew that once we started winning, that that stadium was going to be filled. Yeah. And, and not only that, but uh, um, academically, like I'm, I'm at a school that uh, you know in life I plan to excel. So yeah. they could check all the boxes that you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And those and those uh, employers when they see that UCLA degree, bro, this. You know, you can't really argue against that. No, you can't. Yeah, yeah I'd imagine that, bro. You'd be like, what? Like someone that went to like a top notch school is yeah. here in front of me right now. Exactly. Doing yeah. Like, yeah, I can mm-hmm. imagine how much that might stand out on right. your resume. It does. Yeah, no, definitely so. <laughs> definitely um, so. Man, so like from that point on, bro, like, so after you finished out your collegiate career, mm-hmm. When did uh I guess when did any teams call? Cause I uh like you were undrafted. Yeah, UDFA. Okay. Yeah. So uh, time went on. Um, I seen I seen your declaration by the way, your declaration of uh for the draft. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Seen, I seen that, and at the end of that uh, letter on Instagram, I seen that you had dedicated it to your pops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh unfortunately, um, he passed in twenty twenty. Um. 22. Yeah, he passed in 2020, mm-hmm. uh, December 3rd. It, literally, it was crazy, though, because it was the day of my football my, my football game. And I remember, like... Uh, Wait, this happened on the day of your football game? The day of my football game, man. Damn, and man. Uh, everybody was calling me, bro. And I just remember, in my mind, I was like, dang, like, I think he'd want me to play, like, today. And uh, I remember getting a call from my granddad, his dad. It was like, hey, like, you know your dad would want you to play. So, like, so he was in like bad shape prior to the game, maybe. Uh, no, like it was just it was it was you could have never prepared, bro. He was damn, walking around, eating, moments. laughing. Yeah, yeah. But heart attack came and got him, and then uh, it's crazy moment. Mom called me and everything, and it was I'm in my hotel room and I, my roommate. You know, I just went out to the hall, man. I started bawling. I was just like, damn, like. Bro, like, why? Why right now? You feel me? Yeah, but uh, it, nothing could prepare you for those moments, man. But uh, um, I, I feel like, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a religious guy. Like, uh, I feel like, uh, you know, we attach ourselves to the physical so much. And I think the spiritual is so much more more than anything. So I feel like he was still there for, was there with me regardless of, you know, him passing away. Damn. So that's, um, that's awesome. That's yeah, crazy yeah, 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 that. yeah. You so, still feel that? Uh, I still feel that to this day. Yeah. yeah, I feel like he's right there with me. Whatever it is, like I still feel like um, you know, he's kind of guiding me, whatever way it is. But uh, um, yeah, bro, played in the game, man, and it was just a crazy. I felt like I was floating the whole time because I was still like, I'm still locked in on these plays. Like I'm still, boom, I'm looking at the motions. I'm looking at the like I got to come up and tackle. Like, but yeah. in my, I just felt like butterfly. Like I felt like I wasn't tired at all, but I was just like, like. 
my body was in shock. So it was the weirdest game I've ever played in. Wow. But I played well, though. I played well. I, I racked up a decent amount of tackles, got some PBUs, on, dropped the interception. Yeah. Um, sadly. Dang, I bet you beat yourself up man, for that one. Man, huh? I hate that, bro. I <laughs> yeah. would have dedicated that, man. Yeah, but, uh, man. That would have been dope. Yeah, yeah. But, um. But a pass breakup is still nice, though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it was a, it was a solid game, man. I, I remember the the head coach for the other team coming up to me after the game and was like, "Man, I lost my pops too." I, I was like, "Man, how did this get around?" Like, Damn, I thought this bro. was like my school thing. Yeah. So maybe my coaches maybe mentioned it or mentioned something. it or maybe like a newspaper or like an article or something. I don't Came know. Out that quick. Damn, yeah, that's yeah. Crazy how yeah, fast that information yeah, spread, bro. bro. Yeah, yeah. And and then as a starter, like things like that get around pretty quick. So, um, damn, it could have been one of the moments, but, uh, I mean, I'm glad that you didn't let it like, uh, I don't know, man, just seeing how you are today, bro. It yeah. seems like it's almost like you, you took that experience and, and you've turned it into something positive. Oh, for sure. Like just yeah. the way you are and the way you carry yourself right now, man, it's mm -hmm. just, I don't know. I mean, you could see one, first off, I feel like you dedicating your declaration of going into the draft, like to mm -hmm. your pops. I feel like that says a lot right there and, and, and how much. I guess maybe of an influence he's had on mm. your uh, football career, right? Yeah, you know no, what I'm 100%, so like this yeah. whole journey is like dedicated to him. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be playing with if it wasn't for him. Yeah, I, genuinely, I would not have ever tested the field if yeah. he didn't sign me up that day. And <laughs> I didn't want to go, <laughs> man. Yeah. Uh, well, man, dude, honestly, I don't. I think about that a lot, man. Honestly, yeah. just that specific <clears throat> thing right there, like me losing my like my pops is still here, man. And sometimes mm. I feel like I don't. And I think a lot of people always feel this way, but I, I don't feel like I spend enough time with my family, man. Yeah, like, I always yeah. have stuff I have to do, and, and right. sometimes I'm like, man, like, I didn't spend enough time with them. And, like, while I'm working through the week, I'm like, I just, something, it, I guess it just bothers me, man. I'm mm. like, bro, I didn't spend enough time with them this weekend. But right. I was over there, like, let's say Friday and Saturday. Mm. But I still feel like that wasn't enough time. Yeah. And I, I don't think it ever is, you know? Yeah, you know, I feel like that's something a lot of people deal with. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I got a lot of friends that love their family, but I know, like, you know, a lot of us fight with, like, damn, like, you know, these are, like, my closest people, bro. Am I am I spending enough time? Am I um, taking out time throughout my day to text them and yeah. let them know, you know, what the deal is? And and I, I try to pride myself on that and and uh, because I do it a lot more than I've ever done it before, mm -hmm. but I still feel like it's not enough. Yeah. So it's like, damn, like, I need to find a balance, like, what you know yeah what's a good like literally amount of time yeah. and like I, but i got shit to do exactly because so you got like, your own personal shit yeah to do with. you're also figuring out yeah. yourself in a way too mm -hmm. all that is time in itself it's tough bro it's it tough. is bro yeah it's tough i mean and, and honestly it's like just <clears throat> inspirational already bro for you to even be sitting here right now and like yeah go, going through what you've gone through man like oh, that yeah that just shows your character, man. That just shows who you are and, like, I all the things you're telling me that you're involved with and that you're doing right now, man. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> I'm glad you didn't let something like that, bro, like, I guess, because some people don't ever come out of mm. that situation okay, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, like, I don't know, bro. It's a blessing. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, man, I think God's, like, God and your father, man, whoever you else you may have lost in your life are looking over you, man, and they're... Yeah. Taking care of you and betting on you to continue always. to be the best that you always, always been, yeah. man. I appreciate that, bro. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, um, I appreciate that. What was the? I guess like what was the first call you received from an NFL team? And like, just take me through that whole course. Um, yeah, bro. Um, it was a, uh, it was um, uh, one of the uh, G. Uh, why do I say GA? It was like a. Uh, not like one of the coaches, but uh, like a recruiter. Okay. For uh, scout. Of some yeah, sort. A scout. Um, for the Las Vegas Raiders, that was the first person to ever reach out to me, and um, I remember I was just jumping up like, "Damn!" Like, okay, yeah, this is real. Yeah, I was like, "This is real now." Like, okay, like, like I'm here. Yeah. And then um, days went by, and then finally the Kansas City Chiefs uh, hit me up. Um, and uh, my coach, Chip Kelly, at the time was like, hey, like, uh, uh, Chiefs are interested. They want to fly you out for the rookie mini camp, uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, flew out there, um, was out there for a little bit, did my thing, did what I had to do. Uh, and then um, unfortunate circumstances happened, um, slide back to the crib. After that, 
uh, that's when I went to work out with the Las Vegas Raiders, mm -hmm. and um, they I was in the mo I was in the the most contact with them more than anybody after okay. after the Chiefs thing, and uh, I was just th in my mind I'm like okay like like I gotta go crazy so uh, had to work out out uh, out in Las Vegas. And handle business. Did what I had to do. Ran my fastest forty. Caught all my passes. Brakes were clean, and they had me on like a standby. Like they're like, "Hey, look, um, you know, we saw your film with the Chiefs. Like, you know, we think you're really talented. Blah blah blah. We want to put you on standby because um, there's some guys that we might end up getting rid of. And then, um, you know, talking to some other NFL athletes." Uh, they were basically like, hey, man, like, get on your agent's ass. Like, this is the time where, you know, like, that standby, that, that shit can be, it's real. Like, yeah. you know, they'll, you, can get a, you can get a call months later, weeks later, a year later, whatever yeah. the case is. Make sure you're just always doing something and reaching out to other teams and whatever the case is. You, um, you had some guys that were in there telling you this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some NFL okay. guys in, in the Chiefs locker, or uh, from that I met from the Chiefs that okay. I was still keeping in contact, in contact with. with. Yeah. Okay. Um, what was that competition like, dude? Like, was it like like were you playing at, like you said rookie minicamp? Was it just rookies there? Or they had some vets there too. They had some vets there as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They had some vets there as well, but uh, it's mainly rookies. Okay. Uh, um, so it was uh, it was a lot of like the younger guys. Um, yeah, so they had the they had some vets there. Um, they also had a, a, it was a predominantly rookies though. Yeah. Um, but the talent was, I mean, it's, it's top tier talent. It's, yeah, you know, some of the, the, the best, best of the, the best. best. Yeah, um, from all over the world, and it's guys with big time names from uh, big time colleges. I think we had a receiver from Ohio State that was uh, sure. really good. Um, we had uh, oh, man, I'm trying to remember his name. He was a safety for um, safety for uh, Purple Rain. Um, damn, Seattle uh, Pac-12 school. Why am I losing? I'm blanking out right now. Was he already a player in the NFL? Or? Uh, he had just got there. He oh, had just okay. got there. He was a rookie, but okay. he he went. I think he went first round, third pick. And um, oh shit, damn! Um, I'm trying to think who that is. I can't think, bro. What year was this? It was twenty twenty two. 2022 2022 uh first round third pick third pick Kyle Hamilton no nah. nah it was uh oh bro I'm blanking out bro <laughs> anyways yeah bro it was some, it was some really good talent there man yeah. and they had a lot of DBs too so it was competition every day and it's work bro and the weather in Kansas bro it's you think Houston is bipolar you got tornadoes, you got oh, crazy rain, storms, it's yeah. hot as hell, bugs out there, it was crazy. Is it really like would you compare would you compare it worse than Houston weather for real? Uh, as far it's as, up there. Is, it's up there. Is it humid? <laughs> is it humid like that? It or? does get pretty humid. It's not like a dry heat either. It's it's it gets pretty humid. Oh, and it's okay, like okay. nothing out there. I mean, you got Kansas City, but it's just like Yes. Aside from that, that's it, man. Yeah. That's it, man. But uh, damn, that's wild. Yeah, yeah, bro. With the the elements were against you when you were, you know, working out. We had the indoor as well, so okay. we, you know, if the weather was too crazy, they put us in the indoor. But uh, um, man, that experience must have been insane, bro. Yeah, it was dope, bro. It was, it was, it was. Uh, that was a blessing. Yeah, that's when you really realize, okay, like I'm here, like, but you're not even really. Taking it in cause Yeah cause you having to work Yeah you in grime You like bro yeah. I don't even care Like yeah. I gotta earn my spot I'm, Exactly yeah, yeah. I'm trying to make The fucking team uh -huh. right now I can't sit there And be in uh Like what do you call it Just in awe Or in something awe, Looking just around Like damn this is dope yeah, yeah bro I didn't even have A moment to bask in it I was just like Bro it's, it's, it's work. work It's work yeah. And anybody that's in Rick, uh, Anybody that's in camp Right now they know what's up. Like I was just talking to uh, my cousin the other day, um, Miles Battle. He's a UDFA with the Kansas City Chiefs as well. Okay. And I straight up hit. Him, I said, "Bro, like, how is it out there?" He's like, "Bro, it's work." <laughs> and it's so, like it's such a simple text, but in my mind, I'm like, "Bro, I know." Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you could be gone any day, and they do it in a crazy way. They everything in a big old trash bag yeah, i've seen yeah they get your ticket they give you an itinerary they're like hey look um andy reed wants to talk to you or whoever's the coach of whatever team you're at they put they pack your stuff in a in a big old trash bag whatever bag you know they could fit that could fit everything in, in. <laughs> and um they're like hey um head coach wants to talk to you 
boom has your meeting lets you know hey we got your ticket ready like you'll be back in at the time i was living in la so you flying back to la boom get on that plane and then after that it's wraps like you back to figure it out mode. Yeah. like okay like that's when you're you know a lot of their players are on the phone with their agents like bro like what's up like work something out for me you got to do some you yeah. know and um you know that's when a lot of agents get fired that's when a lot of agents get you know yeah. whatever it's it's just like you just got to figure it out man did you know? um man so i guess like and how do i articulate this question it, I, it's, I guess it's since you didn't really so yes you declared for the draft mm. so you had some expectation of a way and like to right. make it yeah yeah and then when you go and i guess it doesn't turn out the way you were hoping it does mm -hmm. how do you handle that how do you i guess like because i feel like for <clears> most <throat> people sometimes too because you hear these stories about you know nfl players that end up you know making it they're actually playing in the league and mm. like within the three or four years they're they're Done. gone yeah and like i don't know some players you see like like there's just one player it's just a very random player i don't know if you might remember him his name is trey mason he was a running Sounds back familiar, for, bro. at the time the st louis rams they were still in st louis at the time okay and uh trey mason yeah yeah yeah, back, yeah yeah yeah, I yeah, think yeah. He played for auburn if yeah I'm not yeah yeah i know who you're talking about yeah, yeah he yeah. um I don't know what kind of binge it was on. I don't know what it was, bro. But there was, like, some footage that came out. And he was still on the team at the time. He might have had, like, a year in his contract left. Mm. And there was a police video that came out where he was on, like, a four-wheeler or something. Mm. And he was kind of in a just a, 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 a state of mind where it wasn't like he was okay. Oh, and like mentally? Mentally, yes. Okay. It seemed like he was kind of <clears throat> going crazy a little bit. Right. And, um... I don't know. I guess in a way, uh, just the just the way I think about it, man. Like how, like you didn't let something like like you being cut, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Affect you in a way to where you're like, man, I just give up all this. This is what I've been working my whole yeah, life yeah, for, yeah, and yeah, now yeah. that it's not coming true, like right. fuck it all, dude. Uh -huh. You know, like you didn't <laughs> you didn't let that happen. But like, yeah. what was it that I guess didn't make you let that happen? But what what was your your reason to continue fighting to yeah. continue to find who you are? You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, um, damn, the thing with Trey Mason, man, that could be CTE, man. You I never know. It, bro. No, <laughs> you never know. He had, but he had, there was a hit that he had in the NFL, yeah, bro. Yeah. I, I mean, I believe it, dog, honestly. Yeah. But uh, I'm not no doctor. I can't yeah, diagnose him. Yeah, I can't him. diagnose him either, man. But let's but, just be real. He's been playing football his whole uh -huh, life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It is. It is. Uh, it's kind of like a reevaluation because of, of who you are because a lot of athletes – Tie them portray up. tie them that that's their identity yeah. for years like for years 16, like 16 20 man you've been playing football since you was little bro yeah. there i still have athlete homies that are like you know they're like hey bro like i'm going through it right now bro and it's been maybe three years since you know everything has ended they're like bro i'm going through it like i don't know what to do they don't know how to find themselves yeah because it, it's literally like you've tied your whole life to this sport yeah now it's stripped from you now what? Yeah. You get me? And uh, I think this is a topic that a lot of athletes are, are very familiar with. Um, but uh, with me, to answer your question, uh, my thing was I, I, never, I never truly tied myself to the game like that. Like, mm -hmm. my whole mindset was like, dude, I want to be my own boss. I want to figure out a way to be able to delegate tasks, to be able to make money on my own you know my yeah. own terms like uh whatever the case may be you know and um for the time being i don't mind working you know the nine to five whatever the case is but i just need that those financial means to uh to provide for my entrepreneurial endeavors yeah and that's all i want that's all i want i was i was going to use whatever money i made in the nfl yeah. uh say it happened to to invest in myself in my own like specific business whatever the whatever it was yeah um and I didn't even know what the hell I wanted to do entrepreneurial entrepreneurially at the at that point in time but that, uh, that was just your plan that was just the plan that was the goal <laughs> so um after that like it was like okay like man let's get in a, it's it, I'm in hustle mode now because I had offers to go play in uh, like other leagues mm -hmm. like uh, uh there's oh, okay. so many different leagues yeah, XFL dude. CFL European, 
Uh, some kind of arena league. Arena league, yeah. bro. I, I think I have yeah. a, uh, a guy I used to go to high school with mm. named Austin Upshaw. Right. He plays in some kind of different league. Now, he used to play for uh, SMU. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, I guess from that point on, he went on to play in the arena or w- whatever league he's playing in. Right, right, yeah. Where yeah. He's, you know, he's playing and, you know, he's posting highlights and stuff and you see all this stuff. I don't yep. know where you're able to watch his games at. I think he plays for a team in San Antonio, uh, though, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, just like you're saying, there's a bunch of different leagues. So many stuff, different man. leagues nowadays, bro. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I got the, I, I got, I had the opportunity to go play in, uh, one of these leagues. But the job offer that I received was paying more than what mm, the league was the paying. League was so, uh, in my opinion, I was like, you know what? Like, it's a business decision. It's a business decision. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get to the money, man. Yeah, bro. Straight up. Yeah. So, um, I mean, if you think about it, I don't know if you thought about it like this, but like, Essentially, you're going to go break your body and tear your body yes, apart for yep. less money than what you could be making Ex- not doing that. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And, you know, I respect anybody that, that chooses that decision because at the end of the day, it's a lot of people's passion. Yeah. They will choose football over anything yeah. if they make it. You know, it doesn't matter. It's just like there's a goal in mind. Like, if I stay consistent at this, I'm going to get my dream, you know, answered. Mm-hmm. Um me, my dream was different from, you know, some other athletes or some people that might have that fat, that passion of continuing to play football. And uh, that allowed me to just kind of uh, detach myself from the game. Um, now, don't get me wrong. I do have a, a love for football. Yeah. Like, I want to stay close to the game. And I think that's why, um, even with all the working and the business that I have and the um, everything that I'm doing, I was like, you know what? I want to train. Like, let me find yeah. some way to be close to the game. So, um, I, I, I seen that you were doing that. I thought that was mm-hmm. pretty dope, man. Yeah, yeah, bro. Cause that was shit. That was done for me. Yeah, you know. So, and your your uh, like expertise <clears throat> and knowledge that you have now right. from going from you know different universities mm-hmm. to like pretty much a pro level yeah learning things there competing mm-hmm. with guys there yeah that are probably even still there mm-hmm. and it's like yeah you can use that and apply that to like what you're doing now right and exactly I, and i think that's dope because <clears throat> so like do you think football like you have that i guess like passion for it like you say you know what i'm saying because you mm-hmm. say you have a passion maybe to like in a way an extent yeah but do you think you have that because of your father like you think you hold it a little more close to you because of your pops? I think that my dad's passion for me playing football was stronger than my passion for playing football. Uh-huh. And I wanted to please him. Yeah, I wanted to please him yeah. to a certain extent like uh I mean, every kid, every son. Yeah, you know, bro, daughter, it's, just, sure. it's natural. It's embedded yeah. in that father-son type of dynamic. And um I think that fueled a lot of, you know, the reason why I wanted to grind hard in, in the sport and, you know, work out late nights, whatever the case is, because, you know what I'm saying, that was kind of like our uh, relation. That's what our relationship was built from, like yeah. football, like, you know, sports, <clears throat> yeah. mm-hmm, sports, football. And um, I think that, yeah, that's just that's a big part of, like, uh, I guess my slight passion for the game it, it kind of a majority of it kind of stems from the fact that like you know we talk about this it gives us something to talk about it's we're building a relationship off of i guess me playing the game yeah and um, like, like getting closer yeah yeah and me excelling in it and you know i, I see that it makes you happy um like when I do well, and right, it, and it makes me feel good that I do well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Kind of like, dang, like that's my son. Like he doing his thing. Yeah, you know? but uh, uh, I knew that he was uh, okay with whatever I did later on in life. Like before he passed, I could kind of tell. Did you um, ever have those conversations? We never really had those conversations, but he would throw out subtle like uh, comments where it was just like, bro, anything you do, man, like, like mm-hmm. just do it well. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and um, with him. You know, he had the ch- the opportunity to go play professionally as well, and um, he ended up going the engineering route. And he was passionate about his career, so mm. you know, he just I I knew like deep down, like you know, every athlete wants m- most athletes want to have like an athletic like child and like 
if yeah. that child's an athlete, they want them to be the best at it. Yeah. And that was just one of those things. But um, I feel like I've proved everything I needed to prove. Absolutely. You know, it's yeah. like I, I did what I needed to do regardless of where I ended up. Yeah. And um, now it's like I'm in that next phase of life. Yeah. And um, I think he'd be happy regardless. So, Absolutely, man. I believe yeah. it. And to see, like, the person that you are today and the way that you carry yourself and, and how willing you are to help other people – I'm pretty sure your pops were just like that. Oh, 100%. You know I mean? Yeah, yeah. And like just, definitely was. Just everything you've gone through, like, bro, you pushed it as far <laughs> as you can fucking move that needle mm -hmm. without, in a way, being as passionate as most are about it. Right. You know what I'm saying? That just shows your talent and where you could take yourself with really anything you mm -hmm. want to do. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. There's really no, like, and I think this is for all people as well, but, like, there's really no limit I think you can truly put on yourself. If you're Never. if you're putting yourself, like, if you're putting a limit on yourself, I feel like you are, you're not doing yourself any favors. You know what I mean? Nah. Like, and it starts small. Like, <laughs> <Hell> every, <nah. laughs> everyone wants to be, like, I was telling you about this whole thing. Everyone wants to see, like, success coming from it, like, mm. immediately because yeah. they're doing it. And it's it don't like, work that way. It don't work that way, man. It don't never to, work that way. You got to do that shit for 5, 10 years, 20 yeah, years. Yeah, you you got to yeah. build the following. You got to pay your dues. You got to pay your dues. For everything. I don't believe in, like, instant. It happens. And I just think maybe those people are lucky, but or whatever the case that's, is. I but, mean, that's a, 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 lucky or knowing the right yeah. person, bro. But I, I just feel like those quick successes never really last that long yeah. like you got these one hit wonder artists that yeah. they'll drop a banger out of the nowhere and uh -huh. then you'll never hear from that person again no. then you got these seasoned vets artists that have been rapping um going to these shows years and years yeah. three fans and then the five fans and yeah. the 10 fans and the ten thousand, and a yeah. million and the six million like yeah, they 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 finna have that legacy for a while because yeah, they built that slowly they've throughout built, time, and they've 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 seen that person yeah. grow and they're growing with them in a exactly. way. Exactly, yeah. it's really a like just I, I guess making art or just being creative or really doing anything with your life like mm -hmm. that where you, I guess, bring on other people in a way. Yeah, it's a it's a beautiful thing, bro, because you get to grow with these people and they get to watch you grow, and mm -hmm. it's like. I don't know, man, how I am. And, and, and at this point in my life, dude, I'm very like trying to look at the more positive side of things and just trying to like not put a limit on myself for right. anything it is that I want or mm. can see. Mm. Like I told myself, bro, and like I think eventually one day I could be in a room with fucking it's going to sound hilarious. <laughs> like Oprah or some shit. Like, like. <laughs> Yeah, just like a famous Somebody artist, Somebody big. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. fucking Corday, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I honestly think that it's very possible. It is. But it's, it's consistent. Not, yeah, consistent. Yeah. And it's not like you ain't get. I'm not getting there next year. Yeah. I'm, I might. You, <laughs> you know could. what I mean? You don't you know. Could. As long as you stay in that, it's something yeah. is bound to come back. Exactly, you know? bro. It's not like it's just like, uh, you know, you just got to be consistent, man. You know, just staying consistent and doing things the, the right way and, yeah. you know, having like a disciplined mindset. I think that gets a lot of people really far. And not having, um, and just not giving up, mm. essentially, you know, like, a, like I see a lot of things and it, God, it makes so much sense. But it's like you could continue to do like something that you want to do. Like, let's say it's podcasting. Let's say it's wanting to go to the pros you, mm. or whatever the case may be. You can do that i guess the pros a little bit different because it, it depends on your body and stuff yeah, but yeah whatever it is you want to do in life you're consistent with it and you continue to do it every single day every single day you have that opportunity to be able to get big or blow yeah. up or just yeah. you have your opportunity every single day that you're doing it to be able to get to where you want to go one percent better man but the, <laughs> but the second you stop you all that opportunity is gone. Mm -hmm. You don't give yourself a chance at all. At all, yeah. And to me, I can't, like with this whole podcast thing, like when we took the hiatus and stuff I was telling you about, I couldn't just let this go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I couldn't let it go because I <clears> feel <throat> like I already had a vision of what I wanted to do with it. And, and to me personally, bro, like just letting it go and then living my life the way I was living it before, it just didn't feel the same to me. It right. didn't feel like I was really doing anything creative or mm -hmm. just something that I wanted to do with my life. Like, right. bro, I could a lot of perspective and a lot of insight from these conversations that I have with uh, pretty much strangers. Yeah, pr pretty much, yeah. 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 I feel like it might sound cliche, but uh, I feel like the only time you really lose is when you quit, you know? You can never really lose if you're still 
trying and yeah. going on even if it quote unquote fails like it i don't i don't believe in like you gotta fail a little bit yeah you know you gotta fail a little bit but i don't believe that's like a loss you no. know what i'm saying it's like, not a permanent loss yeah it's not permanent because a lot of people bounce back yeah. you know even in sport in the sports world sports you know especially uh, especially at the position I play at DB, bro. D- I'm a, yeah, that's <laughs> another a, thing. I yeah, really bro. think about that. I get a bomb thrown on me for a touchdown, and I'm like, I'm not finna just be there. Like, damn, like, yeah. I'm quitting. Yeah. Coach, here, here, my helmet. Like, yeah, right. I gotta get back out there. Yeah, you gotta make a next you know play. What I'm yeah, bro. It ain't like, yeah, it's yeah, it's no. consistency, bro. It's, and then I just get better from the moments. Yeah. Bro. I just get you better. learn from it. Yeah, he hit me with this move when he went over here. Yeah, he hits me with that same move again. I'm gonna catch it. Yeah, you, know what you mean? can't just, do that multiple times on me, man. Yeah, so things like that. No, and honestly, like, for, I guess in a way, a little off topic, but bro, yeah, DB. Now that I think about it. I've always said that's probably one of the hardest positions to play on the field aside Come on from quarterback. A hundred percent, bro. Like, bro, you have no idea what. The dude in front of you is doing nothing, not a clue. And he can, he knows exactly what he he's knows doing. what he's doing. We but don't have you hint. are having to guess and having like just the technique that goes into it, bro. Is a different. Sometimes type you're of guessing. Class. Yeah, Sometimes I believe you're it. guessing. Sometimes it's like you know what? I'm a step with my outside foot first, take off the the outside release, mm. and then he might hit me with some shit. Where, boom! Yeah, I'm inside now. I'm beat. Yeah, slightly. But you know, with like, it's a pro- tough position. It's bro. tough, bro. It's a tough position. Yeah, like, man, a lot goes into it, bro. I, yeah, I, I think DB is like a, a position to teach you about life, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there's so much shit that goes into it, bro. Yeah. Like, first of all, you're all alone. Yeah, on an island, a, a decent amount of the time, yeah. and if you fuck up, everybody sees that. Like, everybody sees. Mono Imano. They yeah. see the DB, they see the wide receiver, uh boom, the deep ball happens. All you see is literally the guy catching the ball and you just you, trailing behind him. That's it. And then you know, the whole media, everybody in the stadium is like, damn, like who the hell is this guy? Now say a running play happens or whatever. Nobody's gonna blame the the linebacker that's that's supposed to fit in that hole, or nobody's gonna be like, oh, because it's like more of a if it's like a if it's anything else, like um, so it's just in multiple other positions, yeah. bro, you you are you're pretty much like kind of like and a the, help yeah. kind of I mean, person, like like linebackers. They're in the middle. They got this help around them. Yeah, like, bro. You, know you I mean? got the D line. Yeah. You got the safety. Yeah. You got the nickel. Everybody's pretty in close, close proximity. Yeah. yeah. Now DB, you know you got the whole defense right here. The DB right here, all the way, all outside, the damn right to the sideline. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dog. You can hit a slant for eighty yards. Yeah, and like it, it reflects on you. Yeah, and that's it. That, and then like uh, comparing it to the world, like when you get out there, you by yourself. Like yeah. you on an island. Like are you gonna sink or swim? Yeah, you get me. You like, gotta figure this. You out. gotta figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> ain't nobody gonna help me. Yeah, and honestly, bro, like I lean on a lot of people in my life to. To help out in certain moments, but at yeah. the end of the day, it is all on you. Right. And, um, you know, I think life is all about, like, just the choices that you make. Mm-hmm. And, you know what I'm saying? You got to just, I mean, to your best ability and what you feel is the right choice. I mean, everyone at the end of the day, I think, has an idea of what the right choice and the wrong choice is. Right. Especially whenever, like, even writing it down, bro. Writing mm-hmm. down, like, what are the <clears throat> pros and cons of this decision I'm about to do? That, right. Like, that's something I started doing recently, and that shit helps me so much on as far as staying organized and just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I guess, in a way, kind of cleaning that, like, clutter out of my brain, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, I can see that, yeah. Because it's like... I don't know. I I've, I've tend to be more pessimistic towards certain topics and certain mm-hmm. things, and I don't necessarily think that's how, like... I think it's just from my experiences with mm-hmm. those situations. I think that's why I feel a certain way about them. But I'm, like, slowly, like... Just um, what do you call it? In a way, kind of like reshaping my mind, bro, mm. to look at the more positive and like just better things in life instead of being like, man, like fuck this, bro. Like right. I can't, I can't. There, there'd be times, bro, where I'm like, honestly, I can't wait to go and just be like stress free from all of this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't on some like no like a uh, like emo or dark shit, but mm. it's just more like just I guess tired of having to deal because it's a battle every day right. within yourself. I feel like mm. and things that you gotta just kind of 
I don't know, be comfortable with, learn from and stuff. It's just a right. lot of work that mm-hmm. goes into it, you know, yeah. for every individual out here that's a human being. Yeah. And um, at the end of the day, bro, I think honestly, just listening to podcasts, listen to other people like yourself and talk, like hearing what they've come from, like you losing your father and you still being able to be on here today and just, you know, talk about things and be as positive as you are, man, that gives me like that gives me inspiration that gives me hope to continue to like yeah no doubt you know what i mean yeah 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 man. and it's beautiful bro it's honestly <clears throat> like i love every fucking second and minute of doing this stuff you know what i mean yeah yeah so i will never honestly get tired of doing this bro any any person that i have on i honestly want them to whatever you have like bro i felt like you bring you bring something to me you know what i mean definitely yeah you know what i mean and you yeah. help you you're what you're doing is helping me out a lot right and not even just as far as the podcast but my personal life you know right. what I mean? yeah 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 and yeah, that yeah. to me is like so much more than you can i can't even put into words uh-huh. how much that means you're getting something out of it man yeah man yeah. and it's it's fucking dope yeah man, i'm shit i'm glad i could you know help bring, bring something way. to the table yeah, yeah no for real bro <laughs> other than just the conversation yeah yeah man um so i mean you talked about your mom you said she was an athlete as well. She was uh no. no? Uh, I mean she was. She was a uh, she she cheered and danced. Okay. So yeah. But uh I mean that's skill. Yeah, not you know definitely. What I'm yeah. People downplay that shit. Yeah. That shit ain't that shit? easy. No. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, but uh she was uh she was more on the academic side more oh, okay. than anything. Like she got her PhD. She did the whole 13 years extra of school, 12 years extra of school. Whatever however long it takes to get a PhD. Uh, got a doctorate. I mean, that's, that's impressive in itself. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Um, Damn. So you, man, bro, you were surrounded with some very good people. Yeah, life, man. Bro. Yeah, yeah. My dad was an <laughs> he was an engineer. He's a petroleum engineering manager uh, for Lubrizol, which isn't too far. Okay. No, yeah, I think it's in Laporte. Yeah, yeah. I think was, there might be. I mean, I believe there's a couple, but I think there's one over here on Bay Area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and my mom is the she was the CEO of the Health Museum in in down in Houston in the Museum District. Now she's the CEO of uh, another organization. So wow, yeah, they CEO they of some, two different fucking companies. Yeah, they some big people, man. Yeah, they, man, that's yeah. awesome, bro. Yo, that means your expectations, dog. Oh bro. man, it's I'm right yeah, here, bro. I gotta, I gotta do some big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, got I mean, to. shit, you've already done it. I feel like for the first half of yeah, your, yeah, the first like how old phase, are you right now? Twenty five. Okay, you're 25. Yeah, man, yeah, you're, yeah, bro, you're very young, and what you've been able to accomplish, yeah, is, that's awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, well, man. So, um, <laughs> I guess another thing, I don't know if we touched on it yet. We talked about a good amount, um, but uh, like, what made you want to start helping out other athletes? What made you want to go that route? Um, <clears throat> I seen a pretty dope video, by the way. It was some kind of like, like an edit. Like it was an edit video, but it was like a promo video because I did some creeping before. Yeah, you know what I'm of course. Came on, obviously got yeah, to do my homework and yeah, shit. Yeah, sure. Um, and you were like, I don't know, whoever edited this video, if it was you, this was a clean ass edit. I love yeah, videos like this, yeah, bro. Yeah, and yeah. you're sitting there like, <laughs> man, what's you're just on your phone. <laughs> you, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Like, man, what's it called? And he's like, some, some. Yeah. Some. Oh, yeah, I, I think it's that. And then <laughs> as soon as you click on a song or whatever, the music starts going. Yeah, and it yeah. shows you doing your thing. I, I was like, yeah, this is a dope ass uh, video, dude. Nah, that's my boy, man. Shout out uh, CB Effects, man. That's my oh, okay. That's my close homie. Uh, his name is Clark Bryce. He does uh, edits for everybody, bro. He's top nope. tier. Hey, Clark, Clark. Clark, Clark oh. Bryce, CB, C- CB, all right, CB, bro. Hey, yeah. that was a really damn good video, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah, he's he's solid, bro. He does it for uh, athletes, um, does music videos for like some big time artists, and you know he does everything. Yeah, but uh, yeah, bro. What 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 kind of inspired me to get to to training was um, honestly, you know, working the the nine to five, um, man, that that was. A completely different transition in life for me. Like I wasn't as active. I work out every day, but yeah. it's like I'm tired when I get home. I'm mm-hmm. like, bro, like, you know. So I work in procurement in the oil and gas industry for Chevron. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, yeah. So pr- solid job, but yeah, it's definitely. it's it's uh, tedious and it's just mentally tiring. Yeah. So uh, once I would get done with that, it's like, damn. Now I'm driving back home, traffic, whatever the fuck. You know, Houston's crazy. Yeah. Traffic's crazy. I'm tired. I got to cook. Everybody knows a grind, the nine to five grind. Yeah. Um, Just that, that's everyday life. Yeah, bro. <laughs> a lot of people. Not not a fan, but uh, it pays well for the time being. But um, 
Def- definitely not a fan. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, I mean, that's why I started so many other things. But uh, I still wanted to be in touch with the game. Um, and uh, I know I literally remember one of my uh, close friends. Uh, his name is Brian Parrish. Uh, he's coaching. He's coaching at a high school right now, and I think he's you know on track to work his way up to be being like a head coach or something. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, and he's still in like the athletic world with that, like. This dude is full time coach. Like, yeah. he's out there. And then, you know, I got another really close homie named uh, Mikhail, and he works, uh, he works for like the Dallas Cowboys Stadium, pretty much, and oh, all dope. the events and everything. And I was just looking at them, like, damn, like these, you know, the homies are still kind of tied into the yeah. game. Like, I got another homie, uh, Shay Pitts. He's a GA for UCLA right now. Okay, and um, everybody's still kind of doing like. They're staying close to the. They're fo- still football. tied into the game. I don't even. I don't know if they want to, but I do feel like it's fulfilling to them to a certain extent because mm-hmm. you know that's what we've been doing for so long. Yeah, they love it exactly. So, um, me, one thing that I loved throughout my um, throughout my time of pay- playing football was uh, I used to love going to like workout sessions and being surrounded by like all these different athletes from different schools and different locations wherever and like just be grinding and learning from them and like i actually like i enjoyed that more than like ah, nah probably <laughs> even probably even in playing in the game yeah probably even because it was just like this is like the real grind like yeah. this is where everything that translates to the field comes yeah, from exactly so um everything just comes full circle um that was something that i kept hearing i was like dang bro everything just comes full circle and um you started seeing it. I started seeing it. And, you know, these, you know, you build relationships with these athletes. Mm-hmm. And um, that's the same thing I did with my coaches. And it's just kind of like I'm, you know, you're really looking at the progression of somebody from A to Z. Like you're seeing everything. Yeah, you're seeing the bad technique. The, the everything. Thing. Yeah. yeah. And then you see it translate to the game time. And you're like, damn, like we that's something we worked on. Like. I feel like that play was kind of me. Like, yeah, it's, no it's shit, you, man. but that was kind of <laughs> yeah. me. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's just a dope thing to see, bro. And uh, to be able to be a part of that is just, like, that's a blessing, you know? Yeah, no, man, absolutely. I think that's I, – I think whenever you told me you were doing that, I was like, man, that's dope because, like, yeah, you're staying close to the game, but you're also mm-hmm. – like, I feel like this world is about helping other people. Yeah, no, Not definitely. even just your family, but other people. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, bro, like – there's this book I'm reading where it says like every every person you see is you, but just they're different. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's true, and that to me made me feel like like there's not. I feel like a lot of community nowadays. Yeah, like everything is so. Oh, di- I agree. Everything is so divided. <laughs> I agree. And everything yeah. feels like it's just about each individual. And mm. at the end of the day, I don't think that's what it's about. I think like yeah. We've strayed so far away from that community. I feel like how it was when maybe we were growing up. Mm. Uh, and I don't know. I mean, social media has definitely played a part oh, in man, it. A big, big time. Game. Big time. And it's just like people just want, I don't know. I guess people want their opinions to be heard and they want their opinions to be right. Right. And when they're not right, they're very argumentative and stuff. Right. And it's like, I don't know. I keep an open mind about everything. Yeah, yeah, Because I know yeah. at the end of the day, I don't know everything. Facts. Someone else that has, like I said, just <clears throat> the different perspectives of people, man, and, and hearing them and, like, I don't know. There's a lot of value in just listening to someone talk. Yeah, yeah. That you don't know and, like, damn, I have never been through what that person's been mm-hmm. through. And they're, tell- and they're telling me this right now and they're able to get up and they're able yeah. to still come to work and they're able to do this. And I don't ever hear them complain. Uh-huh. What am I fucking complaining about? Right, right yeah. now? It, it just puts a it in bigger picture for you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like, that's what I think is it, it's all about helping other people, mm-hmm. man. So whenever he told me you were doing that and I seen that video, I was like, yeah. Oh, there's some sick content that can come from this bro. And right. him working with people, even like yeah. people that are like, Cause you're not no scrub, nah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, dog, you have yeah. paid your dues. You Definitely. got to, like you got to where you got to, man. And now right. you're doing this thing like you're a name. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people know who you are, and people are like, "Yeah, Cam's out here training people, bro." I was yeah, like, what yeah. for real? Uh-huh. Yeah, he played for UCLA. He went, you know, he was on the Chiefs practice squad at one point. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just talking about all that, and it's like, yeah, like 
that makes people want to come to you. And then right. whenever you do that, it's like, yeah, it's like you said, a full circle moment. Yeah, no, a hundred percent, man. And yeah. I think it's, I think it's so dope, man. Cause that's something that I've been like big on. That's something, another reason why I wanted to use my platform to talk to other people to not just right. help, help the platform out, but like, like help them out as well. Like these yeah, people, yeah. what they're doing with their lives, they're, they're doing something similar to me as no far doubt. as being creative and wanting to do something different. Mm. But like, it's the same in a way. Right. Yeah. And, and I appreciate you, man. Uh, I think you have a really good platform for that. I appreciate that. And, um, you know, I, I only see everything going up, you know, through what we talked about consistency, yeah. um, all of that. Yeah, bro. But, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate platforms like this to uh, allow people to be heard and hear their stories and whatnot. Yeah, That's man. Cause it's, like I said, man, at the end of the day, dude, I think that's what it's all about. And like you coming on here, bro, like I never take it for granted, bro. Anytime anyone steps on here right. with me, because it's like you're giving me your time out of your day to do this. And I'm not even where I want to be right now with this. Yeah. yeah, You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? I feel like most people don't like ah, he only getting 30 views. He only getting yeah. 100 views. One of my videos got 2.5 thousand views. OK. yeah, yeah So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's like. I don't know. I feel like a lot of people like there's a lot of people I've wanted to talk to before, but they don't they don't necessarily reach back out for yeah. whatever reason. I don't know. But maybe some people aren't comfortable with being on camera. Maybe some right. people just I don't know. There's a bunch of different life. Things. Yeah. <laughs> life. There's a bunch of different things that go yeah, into it. And yeah. I don't take it too personal, man. But it's like at the end of the day, I feel like what the vision I have for this and what I want to do with this man, I think it's bigger than myself. Right. And I think at the end of the day, dude, like. This isn't about me. I think what I want to do with this eventually is just be able to be like financially, like have some kind of financial freedom <clears throat> from this, but also mm. give back to like my community and help others while also trying to be yeah. like the best version of myself. And yeah. I feel like I get that from people like you and all the other people that come on here where right. I hear their perspectives, man. Mm. And honestly, it just I'm a big thinker, you know, I think right. all the time, bro. And it's like, yeah, honestly, if it's anything I feel like I've ever truly had a passion for, I think it's this. Yeah, man. <laughs> that's a dope perspective, man. Like, yeah. And I think that's where people get their fulfillment from when they have that type of feeling. You yeah. know, when they feel like uh, not only are you helping yourself, you're helping others. And, um, yeah, I appreciate that. I feel that same way when I'm training, and I feel that same way with my uh, my property business. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think all that's dope, man. No, that that is, bro. Yeah. Like you said, that's what that's what it's all about, man. If, mm. if it, like I said, if I have to do this and 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 it stays at where it's at right now, yep. I don't think it it truly matters to me. I think I could be still in the same position in like five to ten years. I don't think I will be, but yeah, yeah. If yeah, I yeah. was to be, yeah. honestly, man, like this is like I get a lot out of this, right? And it's it made this entire fucking work this hell week that I had, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like as soon as we had this set up, I was like. Bro, it's it's, it's just go time. Go time. I don't even care what happens. <laughs> Come something, on, man. Something bad can happen throughout the week at work yeah. or some shit. And I'm just like, I still have a few on Saturday, Thanks. bro. Like, I don't <laughs> care, dog. So, yeah, yeah man. Yeah, yeah. Looking at the bigger picture. But, bro, I do want to um, thank you for your time. No, no doubt, man. Like, for real, bro. I appreciate you coming on, Cam. Uh, you know, I'll get, I'll get you the... The link and shit and stuff and whatnot so I can get you set up. Yeah, all good. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. uh... Yeah, man, I appreciate you coming on. To anyone out there, I guess, that uh, may be feeling like you're, I don't know. I guess this is a question for you to answer. But, like, you have anything for the people out there, bro, that feel like maybe they're too, I don't know, too tied to the game to where if something like how your circumstance happened yeah. where it doesn't work out, where these people kind of just lose themselves and they don't necessarily know how to find themselves or find that passion like they have right. for the game. Yeah. What do you think is your best I guess advice to those people to not be so hard on themselves. Um, damn, that's big. Um, man, I guess I would say, uh, damn, I don't want to sound cliche like it's a commercial or nothing. Nah, but bro, but that cliche thing you yeah, said, yeah, I think yeah. at the end of the day, bro, that is real <laughs> no matter what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I definitely say that, uh, you know, just from a, I guess from like a Christian perspective, um, I feel like, you know, God made us so much more than what, you know, what it is that we're doing. Like, I feel like whatever it is, like, you know, you're more, we as human beings or just as athletes in general are more than just an athlete. Like, uh, you got multiple athletes that are killing it in something completely different. But I think that, you know, 
um, from a perspective of life, you know, being an athlete for so long, I think about it, it has prepared me for something else. Mm. Like, I think, like, you know, everything that, that came with being an athlete prepared me for something completely different in life. And um, I think a lot of athletes that might not have access to the game as much as they, they would want to, I feel like all of that they've been through has prepared them for something extremely big. So I just say keep that faith. Like, you know, whatever it is, uh, keep trying different things until, like, something, you know, goes through or mm -hmm. something, you know, succeeds. And um, I think everything, you know, you'd give – credence to everything that you've been through in the past whether it's sports or whatever sport it was you're playing or whatever the case may be whatever you felt like your identity was tied to um i just feel like uh it pays out in whatever you know it prepared you for whatever else it is you know that you succeed yeah. in in life so you know there's so much out there to do man yeah absolutely bro. do it <laughs> really good words just um do it. yeah i guess another thing that we didn't talk about uh that I did want to talk about with you yeah. was uh, Bronny James and LeBron playing together. Oh, man. So we talked about that a little off air, but I just want to touch on a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I see a lot of people, like, it's almost like a lot of hate going on about it. Yeah, bro. Ah, bro. Like, I mean, I you got critics for everything. Yeah, that's facts. <laughs> I, I just don't see, like, what... Like, bro, you have LeBron James... Like playing with his son on the Lakers, like this is a historic thing. Bro. Yeah, Come bro, on now. Like, it's bigger than. I don't get why you wouldn't want to see some shit like. Yeah, that. I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. And then not only that, but um, you know, you got a critic saying like, oh, if it wasn't for his dad, you know, he wouldn't even be there. Well, what is a father supposed to? I'm not no dad, but yeah. what's a what's a dad supposed to do? Yeah, put your set your kid up for the most. You know, for, for success. For success. Regardless of how he yeah. does it, you know? And don't matter. Like, bro, it's LeBron. It's LeBron. Yeah. You know, how are you even going <laughs> to... Come <like>? on, bro. <laughs> I don't know, bro. That, that to me, is, is truly yeah. wild. And, and they're, they're saying, like, Man. something about uh, how Bronny's agent was calling other teams and telling them, like... I don't know how true this is. This is something I heard, I heard on ESPN. Yeah, it's all types of shit going yeah, on. Yeah, you don't know what's true and what's not true <laughs> no, at the end yeah. of the day, bro. But I think regardless, whatever you want to say about the situation, you cannot deny that that is not like an inspirational, very like happy moment. I feel like just for people that love sports, yeah. it's even like people that don't love sports. Like, mm -hmm. bro, this is a professional NBA player who's been playing well over, what, 20 years. Yeah. And the one of the greatest still competes at a high level to this day. Yeah. It's the NBA lead score, <laughs> leading scorer right now. Facts, yeah. Like, and and he gets to play with his son. Like, I don't know. Y'all are just a special moment, bro. A very special moment. I don't think moment. we'll see some shit like that. No, I don't think we'll see something like. And that. And they said in two years, he can Bryce Bryce James could be playing with them. Man, like what? That'd be crazy. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Bro. That'd be crazy. Yeah, bro. But nah, man. I'm. I'm on. I'm all for it, bro. I yeah. want to see him succeed, man. I wanted to see him succeed in in college. Um, TikTok used to drop these little like clips oh. and edits of uh, Bronny like from every single game with like the same song every time. Yeah, and it would have every single point he scored, and I was just like, "Bro, come on, man! Like, I want to every. I feel like so many people wanted to see Bronny succeed. Bro, yeah, and I still do. Yeah, um, whether it's a role player position or whether he's just dominating in general. Yeah, and I feel like he is one of the best teachers. At his disposal, he's gonna get better. Yeah, he's gonna get. He got nothing but time and and greats on his side. Yeah, literally. So, it got, that's yeah. my opinion, bro. You can hate me for it. <laughs> no, nah, dog. I, I don't him, bro. care, bro. It, yeah, yeah. He got a dog living with him, man. <laughs> Come on now. Um. All right, man. With that being said, I think we're gonna wrap it, bro. But again, Cam, yeah. I, I appreciate your time, dog. Sure. Um. You know, for everyone out there, man, this is the conference. I'm um, your host, Johnny G. This is Cam. It's been a great episode, man. If uh, y'all can, please like, comment, uh, subscribe, and share. It means the most. Any kind of little, any kind of like, comment, or even share, man, it actually goes much, you know, it goes a long way. And if y'all support this, man, y'all support this conversation, even the past conversations that we've had, uh, we greatly appreciate it, man. And at the end of the day, man, y'all are kind of what keep this thing going. So, um, you know, thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all for tuning in, man. And we'll catch y'all on the next one, man. Y'all take care. Yeah.